So today we are observing an end of the year celebration, end of the church year. We're not ushering in 2021 yet, as you well know, and you probably really well know because everyone in this world seems to be just looking forward to the new year, but we are looking forward to another year of observing God's grace, of being given God's gifts as we study the life of Christ throughout the church year, and today. We are in the last, the, the, the last weekend of our church year, and we are going to examine the last day. We're going to do so with expectation, with hope, with joy, at the same time understanding that there are a lot of people that, whether they know the last day is coming, they approach that with, with fear and with trembling. And you don't need to. And we'll examine that with our theme today, Christ brings his church to the world without end as we look forward with hope, as we close out this church year with that hope of our Lord coming to bring him, to bring us together with him into his eternal kingdom. We have Professor Aaron Christie with us today sharing God's message in our sermon and uh, we look forward to celebrating with him this evening and we look forward again to the message that he will share with us about this hope that we can have, that we, that we do have. You can follow along with the order of service you have printed out for your bulletin and also on the screen. We'll be in with our opening hymn, Come Now, Almighty King. stand. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins to God our Father, asking Him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Holy and merciful Father, I confess that I am sinful, and that I have disobeyed you in my thoughts, words, 
words and actions. I have done what is evil and failed to do what is good. For this I deserve your punishment, both now and in eternity. But I am truly sorry for my sins, and trusting in my Savior Jesus Christ, I pray. Lord, have mercy on me, a sinner. God, our Heavenly Father, has been merciful to us and has given us His only Son to be the atoning sacrifice for all of our sins. Therefore, as a called servant of Christ and by His authority, I forgive you all of your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. In the peace of forgiveness, let us praise the Lord. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Eternal God, merciful Father, you have appointed your Son as judge of the living and the dead. Enable us to wait for the day of his return with our eyes fixed on the kingdom prepared for your own from the foundation of the world. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. You may take your seats. Our Old Testament lesson for this day on which we eagerly await our Lord's return to call us home is taken from the prophet Daniel. There are some who will try to say that the Old Testament Jews didn't have a view of the resurrection, didn't have a view of the eternity. But we do see that they did. In Daniel, the words of the prophet, we see that he eagerly awaits the end of time. Not just looking forward to the first coming of the Lord, but looking forward to his return. Daniel chapter 7. As I looked, thrones were set in place, and the Ancient of Days took his seat. His clothing was white as snow. The hair of his head was white like wool. His throne was flaming with fire, and its wheels were all ablaze. A river of fire was flowing, coming out from before him. Thousands upon thousands attended him. Ten thousand times ten thousand stood before him. The court was seated, and the books were opened. Therefore, in that day they will know 
that it is I who foretold it. Yes, it is I. This is the word of our God through his prophet. We'll continue with our psalm today, Psalm 95. We'll sing this to the familiar tune of the hymn, O Little Town of Bethlehem. Our second lesson comes to us from the Apostle Paul's first letter to the Thessalonians, where he assures the Thessalonians and us that there will be no believer, whether they are alive on the last day or whether they have gone to sleep, they have died and been placed in their graves where their bodies are resting. All who believe in the Lord will be called to his side on that last day. Brothers and sisters, We do not want you to be uninformed about those who sleep in death so that you do not grieve like the rest of mankind who have no hope. For we believe that Jesus died and rose again. And so we believe that God will bring with Jesus those who have fallen asleep in him. According to the Lord's word, we tell you that we who are still alive, who are left until the coming of the Lord, will certainly not precede those who have fallen asleep. For the Lord himself will come down from heaven with a loud command, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trumpet call of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. After that, we who are still alive and are left will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so we'll be with the Lord forever. Therefore, encourage one another with these words. This is the word of our God through his apostle. Please stand. Alleluia! I am the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last, the beginning and the end. Alleluia! Alleluia. 
The Gospel according to St. Matthew, chapter 25. This will serve as the basis for our devotion a little later on. When the Son of Man comes in His glory and all the angels with Him, He will sit on His glorious throne. All the nations will be gathered before Him and He will separate the people one from another as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. He will put the sheep on His right and the goats on His left. Then the Father will say to those on His right, Come, you who are blessed by My Father, take your inheritance the kingdom prepared for you since the creation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you invited me in. I needed clothes, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you looked after me. I was in prison, and you came to visit me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you, or thirsty and give you something to drink? When did we see you a stranger and invite you in, or needing clothes and clothe you? When did we see you sick or in prison and go to visit you? The king will reply, Truly I tell you, whatever you did for one of the least of these brothers and sisters of mine, you did for me. Then he will say to those on his left, Depart from me, you who are cursed into the eternal fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry, and you gave me nothing to eat. I was thirsty, and you gave me nothing to drink. I was a stranger, and you did not invite me in. I needed clothes, and you did not clothe me. I was sick and in prison, and you did not look after me. They also will answer, Lord, when did we see you hungry, or thirsty, or a stranger, or needing clothes, or sick, or in prison, and did not help you? He will reply, Truly I tell you, whatever you did not do for one of the least of these, you did not do for me. Then they will go away to eternal punishment, but the righteous to eternal life. This is the Gospel of our Lord. We continue by confessing the Christian faith with the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended to heaven, and is seated at the right seats as we continue with our hymn of the day, Lo, He Comes with Clouds Descending.
In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, my dear brothers and sisters in Christ. We Americans, we are not a patient people. We like our food fast and our preachers' sermons short. And I don't know how much of it is the influence of America or how much of it is simply human curiosity, but we like to get to the end of things. We buy a brand new book and we just itch to turn the page or scroll to the back of the book to see how it all ends. We'll watch a football game for hours, but come to two-minute warning, we are all eager to see what's going to happen. The election that we just went through has been going on, frankly, for years. But a few Tuesday nights ago, we were all eyes. That eagerness to get to the end, that interest that people have about the end, is something that we Christians are also bitten by. How many people, when they are confirmed, got their brand new confirmation Bible, they open it up to Genesis 1-1, and right there it is, how we got there. And, and now we're going to decide, we're going to read right through it, but, but usually people, as they read through Scripture, kind of get lost in the middle of Leviticus, and then they take a good hard right hand turn to the end of the book of Revelation to try and get a golden nugget or two, some information about the end. But here we face a paradox tonight. We are eager to know about the end. But what scripture tells us about the end makes us downright comfortable. You just confessed your Christian faith that we believe in Jesus who will come again to judge the living and the dead. But I'm not the only man here tonight that isn't interested in getting up close and personal with that grand truth anytime soon. We live in a country riddled with COVID. In my own family, we've lost two uncles and an aunt in the last three weeks. America is, is not at rest with itself. On this last Sunday in the season of the church here, our, our eyes are focused on the end, which raises a question. What will be my end? Your end? Our end? Will our end be one of heat, or will our end be heading home? Mankind, this very night, has the power to end life on planet Earth as we know it. And if mankind, the creature, has that awesome potential, just a, a nuclear detonation or two, to, to end life as we know it. How much more so does God the Father, the creator of the heavens and the earth, the creator of we human creatures, have the awesome ability to close the curtains right quick on his present creation? And then we come face to face with those truths. Perfect justice, holy judge, exacting judgment. And who is it tonight that teaches you those things? It's not a crazed street preacher yelling into a megaphone that I once heard at a bus stop in San Francisco, California. You know who's teaching you these truths tonight? It's the Lord Jesus Christ himself who on the very last week of his earthly ministry takes one more opportunity to prepare you and me, his people, for our ultimate end. Matthew 25, he says, he will say to those on his left, depart from me, you who are cursed, into the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angels. Listen, modern day American spirituality has certainly put a spin on the Lord Jesus Christ, that he is kind, that he is lovey-dovey, and that he is certainly tolerant of whatever we happen to think whenever we think it, which means that he's generally pretty permissive when it comes to me and my favorite sins. 
But Matthew 25, Jesus is telling us about the spin-free Jesus, the real Jesus, the one who will come again as the judge, the king on the clouds, to judge the living and the dead. Why does Jesus tell you these things? Does he want to scare the pants off you tonight? No. He came to save his people. Now I know that all this talk about Jesus coming again at the end of times, that the earth will quake and the nations will shake and we all together, every nation, tribe, people and language will be brought before our God, our Father and our Creator, that that, that might seem just perhaps a little bit surreal for our 21st century tastes. But the Bible's teaching about a God of perfect justice, a horrible hell that knows no hope, that's what Jesus is teaching tonight. Lifestyle, Christianity, communication principles, money management, those those are things that go down pretty well in American Christianity today. The biblical reality of final fire in brimstone, not so much. Which is why again and again the scripture teaches us that Christ will come again to judge far before we ever get to the book of Revelation. In tonight's gospel, when the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the angels with him, he will sit on his glorious throne. All the nations will be gathered before him and he will separate people one from another as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. Then they will go away to eternal punishment but the righteous to eternal life. Rewind to the Old Testament, Malachi. Surely the day is coming. It will burn like a furnace. All the arrogant and every evildoer will be stubble. And the day that is coming will set them on fire, says the Lord Almighty. Not a root or a branch will be left to them. Fast forward to 2 Thessalonians. This will happen when the Lord is revealed from heaven in blazing fire with his powerful angels. He will punish those who do not know God and do not obey the gospel of our Lord Jesus. They will be punished with everlasting destruction and shut out from the presence of the Lord and from the glory of his might. Let's review. Burn. Fire. Blazing. Everlasting destruction. Shut out from God's presence. It's no wonder we just sang deeply wailing, deeply wailing, deeply wailing shall the true Messiah see. If this is the end of this present world, what will be my end? Is it heading for the heat? There will be heat on the last day. Why? I know too much global warming. No, too many nukes in North Korea or Iran or or rogue nations on earth. No. Do you know why there will be heat on the last day? Too much sin. It's the ultimate politically incorrect thing to say today, but when it comes to sin, God hates it. And you need to notice in our section of Scripture tonight, it's not the biggies, is it, that Jesus is talking about when it comes to sin. Listen carefully. He will say to those on his left, Depart from me, you who are cursed, into the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry. You gave me nothing to eat. I was thirsty. Nothing to drink. I was a stranger. He didn't invite me in. I needed clothes. He didn't clothe me. I was sick, in prison. You didn't look after me. They also will answer, Lord, when did we see you hungry or thirsty or a stranger or needing clothes or sick or in prison and did not help you? He will reply, truly I tell you, whatever you did not do for one of the least of these, you did not do for me. Three great truths tonight. Truth number one. What really is the difference between shooting someone on the one hand 
and refusing to feed and clothe and comfort a person on the other hand. The net result is the same. A child of the Heavenly Father suffers harm. One actively, bang, the other because I didn't have the time. I didn't have the money. Frankly, I didn't really care. Two, Jesus teaches that we Christians are part of a body. Every single one of us tonight are members of the great body of Christ. And Christ Jesus himself is the head of that body. What we refuse to do for the least member of the body, we in fact refuse to do for Christ who is the head of the body. Three, Jesus teaches that genuine Christian faith always produces genuine Christian fruit. And when we hear of these people that are producing no fruits, even common courtesies, loving, loving actions of, of food and clothes and, and drink and, and comfort, that faith without fruit is dead. And God says, whoever does not believe will be condemned. So, here I stand before you tonight with my stomach hanging over my belt buckle. I can picture the hungry people that I never did a thing to help. With a shirt and a suit coat on my back, I, I can picture those, those people that, that needed the basics of life and I did nothing. With, with a, a world of need all, all around us, the hungry, the poor, the hurting, the lonely. How often I just opted to stay centered in myself. How many times did someone need to be stood up for and I remained mute? Or how many times did I really need to shut up and I wouldn't? What then will be my end? Am I heading for the heat? And that's a critical question because if anything 2020 has taught us, brothers and sisters, it is that human life is, is not as certain as we once thought it was. How much money are you going to have when you retire, do you know? How long is your health going to hold out? How long are you going to live for? Members of my family are answering that in very, very different ways than what they were on January 1st of 2020 at the beginning of this year. When Jesus comes again, how will he see me, see you, faithful and fruitful or faithless and fruitless? He is coming again quickly, suddenly, speedily, like lightning from the east of the west, and he will judge, and that tonight, brothers and sisters, is the ultimate cup of full-strength black coffee to sober us up. That in serving the least among the souls of this world, we are in fact serving the Savior. That I am to live this day as if it is my last day, and I am to be ready today as if tonight we're going to be judgment day. But now, I don't want you to sweat the heat. I want you to cool it. Because you know and you love that one who will come to judge the living and the dead. His name is Jesus, and he has come to save his people from their sins. Listen to how that other half of that judgment day unfolds. The king will say to those on his right, come, you who are blessed by my father, Take your inheritance, the kingdom prepared for you since the creation of the world. I was hungry, you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you invited me in. I needed clothes, you clothed me. I was sick, you looked after me. I was in prison, and you came to visit me. 
Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when did we see you hungry or feed you or thirsty and give you something to drink? When did we see you a stranger and invite you in, needing clothes and clothe you? When did we see you sick or in prison and go and visit you? And the king will reply, truly I tell you, whatever you did for one of the least of these brothers or sisters of mine, you did for me then the wicked will go away to eternal punishment, but the righteous to eternal life. Again, three great truths. One, isn't it fascinating that on the great day of judgment, the righteous aren't even aware, really, of of what they did for Jesus? It's as if they forgot the grand truth that changing a a baby's diaper is is the same as if you would have changed baby Jesus' swaddling clothes while the angels were singing in Bethlehem's fields. Note again that, too, we are a body in Christ Jesus, and whatever the the smallest act of mercy and love is, is done for another member of the body, that that, in fact, is done for Christ, who is the head of the body. Three. Faith always produces fruit. If I am producing fruits of faith for my fellow man as I am showing him the love of the Lord Jesus Christ, then however small that act might be, because it's done out of love for the Lord Jesus, that is genuine fruit of faith, that faith is alive and well. And Jesus says, whoever believes and is baptized will be saved. Whoever believes in Jesus shall be saved. Why? Because he fed the hungry. He healed the sick. He had a perfect heart of compassion for the poor of the world. He invested his time and effort and energy into seeking and saving that which was lost. His perfect helping hands were poked with spikes for every time our hands became arthritic in acts of love. He willingly allowed men, wicked men, to stretch out his arms upon the cross so that one day those same arms will reach out in welcome to you. He suffered the full heat of his God and Father's wrath upon the cross so that one day you and I will receive the warmth of the Father's welcome in the mansions above. He rose from the dead so that one day he too will raise us up and then he will take us up. And then forever, brothers and sisters, with our own eyes we will see him and forever we will experience the full strength, joy of Jesus. Don't sweat the heat. Jesus is coming. He's coming to take you home. And you're not going to miss it. If you are sleeping softly in the earth when Jesus comes, he will wake you up. And if you are still walking around serving him and and loving others in the land of the living, he will take you up. But either way, we're going home to be with Jesus. And then this will be reality, COVID forgotten. They are before the throne of God and serve him day and night in his temple. And he who sits on the throne will spread his tent over them. Never again will they hunger. Never again will they thirst. The sun will not beat upon them nor any scorching heat for the lamb at the center of the throne will be their shepherd. He will lead them to springs of living water and God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. Brothers and sisters, may the Lord Jesus Christ bless you with much joy this day and every day as we wait the final day. Which brings me to one final thought. We Americans, we kind of like to think of Judgment Day as being doomsday, the end. 
Martin Luther, in, in the first language, in, or the first Bible in the language of the people, the German Bible, do you know how he translated Judgment Day? He, he translated their Jüngste Tag, the, the youngest day, the first day. When Jesus comes again in this world and all sin and death passes away and dies forever, we will be with the Lord on that first day of our forever. Oh, that we were there, we'll sing this Christmas. Amen. And now the peace of God which surpasses all understanding, guard your hearts and your minds through faith in Christ Jesus. Amen. We respond to God's word with the singing of the hymn. In our prayers, we want to rejoice that God has gotten Arnith Roller and Kathy Zapolowitz through their surgeries and they are, they are now recovering. We also want to uh, keep in our prayers Dolores Yar, who is recovering from what is believed to have been a stroke earlier this week. We also want to keep in our prayers the Diverts as they mourn the death of Dave's brother Tom and also uh, keep praying for Pastor Dan Schrader as he deliberates the call that we have extended to him to serve as one of our pastors here at Salem. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. For the faithful proclamation of Christ our King and for the strengthening of God's people in this true faith and their baptismal life in Christ, let us pray to the Lord. For Christ's holy church, who, for all who faithfully confess the saving name of Christ and for the protection of the Lord to extend over us against the devil, the world, and our sinful selves, let us pray to the Lord. For God's people in this place, for the mission work, for the mission and work that God has given us to do, for Pastor Dan Schrader as he deliberates the call that we have extended to him, and for the unity of the Spirit and for a spirit of cooperation and harmony in our life together. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For all the schools of our church body, for our seminary where our pastors are being trained for service, and for the campuses where our young are prepared for their occupations by their vocation as God's people, by baptism and faith, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For those who have wandered from the flock of God, for the faithful shepherds who gather them in through the voice of, the, of God's word, for our forgiveness and for our willingness to forgive others in Christ's name, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For our president and our governor, our elected leaders, and all in authority over us, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For artists and artisans, for science and innovation, for those who serve us in medical professions, 
for tradespeople and laborers, and for those who serve and protect us as police, firefighters, and military personnel. Let us pray to the Lord. For the hungry and the homeless, for the unemployed and the underemployed, for those who work in disaster relief, and for the social service agencies of our church, let us pray to the Lord. Lord for those afflicted by illness of body, including Ardeth Roller and Kathy Sokolowitz, who are both recovering from surgery, and Dolores Yar recovering from a recent stroke, and for those who suffer in mind, and for those who care for them, that the Lord, that God's strength may be given to them, and they may be given patience and delivered to everlasting life. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For the grieving, including the diverts who mourn the death of Dave's brother Tom, that they may have hope. And for those near the end of their earthly lives, that they may be sustained to faith, to everlasting life. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Lord God, Heavenly Father, we here remember the sufferings and death of your Son, Jesus Christ, for our salvation. Praising his victorious resurrection from the dead, we draw strength from, from his ascension before you, where he stands for us as our own high priest. Gather us together, we pray, for the ends of the earth to celebrate with all the faithful at the marriage feast of the Lamb and his kingdom, which has no end. Graciously receive our prayers together with the prayer Christ has taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not to temptation, but to the rest of the evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, grant to your church the Holy Spirit and the wisdom that comes from above. Let nothing hinder your word from being freely proclaimed to the joy and edifying of Christ's holy people, so that we may serve you in steadfast faith and confess your name as long as we live. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with his favor and give you his peace. We continue with the hymn, Jerusalem the Golden.
Good evening again. Really good to see you and thank you, Professor, for your message this evening. Uh, a good reminder for all of us that we're just waiting for our Lord to give what He has earned us. And so we don't need to be fearful. Um, a couple of reminders to pass on to you. Uh, first of all, this is our last normal Thursday service until 2021. Next week we will have our Thanksgiving services. Those will be Wednesday evening and Thursday morning. And then after that, we will have our Advent services, which will take place on Thursday nights. So 4 o'clock and 6.30 for those services. And then we'll have Christmas and New Year's, and then we'll be back to our normal Thursday schedule in January of the new year. So just keep that in mind. Um, there are calendars that are available with the December with the December schedule. If you're wondering how that kind of fits together, you need to see that visually. You can see that there. There will be reminders of this in the emails that go out and on our online calendar as well, too. So just wanted to keep that in front of your eyes. And as you're walking in the halls uh, to come to church, you probably also notice that the 2021 offering envelopes are already there. Um, grab your own set of envelopes. Um, if you have a family member that you want to grab those for as well, too, and if for some reason you notice that there might not be one with your name on it, let us know in, in case some clerical error was made or something what happened with the, the stickers that when Cindy was putting the labels on the envelopes and we get that uh, figured out for you as well, too. And then also, just a reminder for the collection for, our, for Northside for this Christmas season, we're collecting new items, new clothing items, new toy items, um, and some food as well, too. There's a list of all those things being collected uh, in your worship folder that you can take a look at when you go and do some Christmas and holiday shopping as well, too, in case you want to pick up something for uh, those in, in our midst that don't have as much and could use a little bit of a pick-me-up and a little bit of Christian love shown in this way um, through this collection as well. That is everything I wanted to highlight for now. Please keep Pastor Dan Schrader in your prayers as he continues to deliberate. His email is in your worship folder if you wanted to send him a note. Um, so that information is there. That being said, God is good. And how do we rise at Salem? God bless your week. Mm -hmm.